Hi folks, we just got here to this DMG event, and funny enough, we met Jake Yates on uh, Yates Precision uh, on Instagram. Who also works for a pretty awesome company in Pennsylvania, and they're here looking at... Yeah, we're looking at the, uh, the Evo 60, a full five axis linear machine. A uh, company I work for, we manufacture medical implants. So yeah, we're in Southwestern PA, uh, a company's called Perry the Company. So, I, I knew it wouldn't take long to put a cart here to the video we did with 1186, uh, who also has, uh, he's got like one of everything, but he has one of the uh, Evo machines, which is a linear motor machine, so super fast. It doesn't actually have uh, ball screws. It has these magnetic, think like a mag trainer, uh, maglev train, which is really, really cool. So you guys want it for just absolute great finishes? Yeah, yeah, so a lot of the plastic parts we do that really show uh, you know, blend issues and things like that. Right now we're running a, Sudacoma index are on top of a, a three axis machine and, and those blend issues are starting to come out. So we want something a little bit more integrated. Sweet. And so you'll take whatever machine you end up with will end up cutting titanium and plastics? Most likely. It's yeah. like pretty extreme opposite. Yeah, so we're looking for something that cover, kind of covers the full spectrum. Um, yeah, so we got you know, titanium, we got plastics, we got 17 floor, stainless, uh, a little bit of everything. So. Awesome. What kind of um, options, tooling, uh, crib size, that kind of stuff, what do you think about? Uh, so automation? Tooling, automation, we'll probably want to prep for automation to have the, uh, the ability in the future, but uh, um, as far as tooling, you know, we're looking for probably 60 tools. That's it? Yeah, yeah really? we don't run a lot of tools. Um, we do a lot of changeovers. Okay. You know, we go to a different part family, so we're swapping okay. out all the tools. Uh, definitely through spin coolant. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this machine really fits our bill, so. Sweet. You, pretty hard at it. you guys gonna buy it today? There's a chance. We're actually uh, this machine technically has our name on it if we decide to. Order. Really? Yeah. So we've been talking Folks, about purchasing. That's super this. cool. We might be looking at the, this machine heading to PA. Actually, the machine that uh, that Devin 186 bought ran our test cut right before. No way. Right before that's he bought hilarious. It. They were packing it up that day to send it to him. That's cool. I think his big F machine was here in the showroom too okay. for a long time. Okay. This is Ryan Shore. He's Shore Machining. Awesome. Good together. to meet you. What are you here for? Uh, same, same, same thing. Same thing? thing? Yeah. Oh, you guys are all here together. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I think six of us out. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. It's really cool. What, what spindle is in this, you know? Uh, so it's a 20,000 RPM spindle, I believe, and it's the HSK-63. Hey, what do you guys run in that Makino right now? HSK-63. Yeah. Uh, except we have five horizontals that uh, Makino A51s are Cat 40. Yeah. And we have six PS105 Makinos that are also Cat 40, but our F5s are all uh, HSK-63. The PS105 is their three-axis vertical? Yes. Okay. Yeah, more like their tool room mill almost. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. It's and I want to say it was like the PS90 or 95 is like their bread and butter 40 by 20. Is that right? I believe so. So it was the PS95 and they just went to a PS105. Okay. So it, 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 they pretty much phased out the 95 and it's got it. 105. Got it. Yeah. So a great example right now though, really this is three plus two machining. They're doing a three axis strategy while the machine is held in a five axis orientation, but it's not simultaneous five. Although if you want to do good simultaneous five, having this as a linear machine is the way to go. Holy cow. We're gonna go find the raw material for the Iron Man. Actually, I think they're doing, you said they're doing an off one. Is your name Jim? Yes. I'm John. John, how good, you doing? Good to meet you. Okay, so if you guys have seen any of the stuff from SS CAD CAM, he's got the DMU 65 monoblock. Uh, 65 has all the bells and whistles. 75 is pretty much off the shelf. This is what you get. You can definitely see it's an adaptive or a dynamic style tool path. You know, spectacular finishes for even just a roughing. It's like a ground discard tool. Pretty long gauge length though for what they were doing. Looks like they've got some Mighty Bite style clamps on risers, and the idea here is you can make something like this. Now we're looking at the dual block line. I've also heard these called the portal machines. I love these machines. 
They're full five axis machines. The difference is that you've got that five axis articulation in the head, not in the table. And that makes sense when the workpiece is really heavy because it, you'd rather move around the less heavy object. Some of these machines are also the FD version, which means they can also do turning. What an awesome, incredible, capable machine, and they can really hog out some material too. Okay, so folks, this is the new Dura Vertical, the CMX 1100V. We saw it card here to the IMTS video. So it's your basic three axis machine. Uh, Mori, or DMG has a little bit of a different strategy with the way this cast iron is built. And what takes you back when you walk up to it is you've got sort of this 45 degree, almost like a slant bed lathe. Um, pretty good. Um, can you move the Y axis forward or is that just in the head? Right, so this is as close you're getting to the table. Yep. Got it. But it does have a accordion. Yeah, it's a separate system that will open up. But yeah, so actually it's pretty nice. You can walk up to the machine, so you can see here, really easy access um, to get to your parts, which I like. It's actually a pretty high. If you're this, looking at the standard CMX, the table height is about here. What's, oh, you li you lose, or you, excuse me, if you right. sacrifice. Yep. Plus also there's a uh, 200 millimeter riser column okay. on this machine to Got accommodate it. for the extra height because of the balance change. Got it. Do you know minimum spindle to table distance? Uh, 26.1 inches. Okay, a bit then. And these are plus. <laughs> these are cat plus spindles. Uh, yeah, these are cat 40s. Um, you can do face contact, which we do on this machine for a couple of tools. Okay. Uh, when you get face contact option, you'll notice there's blow nozzles there, so you get a blow off across the plant yeah. while you're doing tool change. Got it. Got it. Re re really nice uh, shunk work holding system. Super versatile. Uh, with the notches though, really nice stuff. All right, folks, let's do a table swap on this guy. So it's interesting because this is yet another way, in fact, uh, probably a really easy way to, to implement automation. And then my reaction would be you don't have the gains you would have with a you know, full-blown palletized system with three or four or 10, but I'll tell you, um, this is a little bit more actionable. You've got less investment in work holding tooling. And for us to be able to hit cycle start and run that second shift overnight, this gets you doing that right away. Perfect. We'll do it from this angle. Just assign a program to the table. Yep. Yep. You have a work that. So whatever program numbers you're writing on pallet A or pallet B, yep. those are the ones that are right. right. And this this looks a little bit different than what I'm used to seeing, like the CELOS on the DMUs and so forth. Right. Is that this always is, this is MAPS 4. Okay. Uh, on the, the machines that have CELOS, typically they're MAPS 5. We do have some machines that are fan and control that have MAPS 4S on them. Okay. Uh, but for the most part, the like the Mitsubishi controls, yep. those are MAPS 5. Got it. Wait, um, no CELOS here. No. Is it an option? 
Not for the CMX yet. Not yet. Interesting. So, cool. So awesome. they're starting to incorporate it more into the fan and controls as we progress. Uh -huh. It's not quite there as it is with the Mitsubishi controls yet. Got it. So. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. No problem. We are inside the robot cell. Let's step out of the robot cell and see what we got. I really hope this looks as cool on video as it does in person. So awesome. into a fourth axis fixture, awesome. Probe it in. It looks like they've got hydraulic clamping through the fixture, which is pretty cool. Sandvik 245 base mill. I bet you they're just air cutting, yeah, still. Ooh, that's fast. That is really fast. Look at that tool, new generation of their NHX. These are really good horizontal machines. Look at that 75 horsepower spindle. Is it silent but you don't hear a thing? Looks like a milling shot. That you hear. Yeah, that ain't aluminum. Chamfer. Looks like that Sandvik 316. One of the things I really like about this, and it's pretty, you know, pretty important for all machines, but especially a productivity machine, the lights out is look at the just absolute huge volume of, of coolant waterfall you've got. That's absolutely going to make sure you've got process reliability when it comes to evacuating those chips. Beautiful finishes. Yeah, 41.40. It's just the cooling's gonna come on. Okay. All good? Yeah. So NLX 4000, so sort of what we would be looking at in terms of the smaller traditional lathe, except you've got the larger diameter capability. What does the 750 mean? That's the bed length. Okay. So how, how long between okay. like spindle and tail stop. 4000 is diameter. Yeah, yeah, diameter. What's the material? 4140. Is that a slow index? Uh, I can control it with the feed override. Is it a 100% uh, It's near 100%. Yeah. 
It's actually pretty cool to appreciate that this is moving in two axes as it's making that cut. You can sort of see it if you stare at the, uh, the slant cross line. So what's awesome, folks, is I got to see a familiar face, which is Sarah. So you're now with MT, yeah. and you guys run live tool and other late... Yeah. All lathe stuff though. Yeah, all awesome. lathe, all lathe. Cool. Or like mill turn, you know, oh, okay, milling yeah. lathe. Yeah, so you awesome. can do some milling, but yeah, it's fun. Cool. I love it. Cool. So everything in this turret is MT? Yep. Awesome. It's all, yeah, MT tooling. So that's our manufacturer. They're out of Italy, so yep. MT. And it's kind of funny, our company name, so we're like the main importer, is MD tooling. So oh. pretty much MT, it, it is MT tooling. We're MD tooling, we were imported. So okay. close enough, MT is like same thing. <laughs> Yeah, I never, I never noticed the difference. I yeah. never paid attention to yeah, that. Yeah. So what's awesome too is everyone knows the famous Instagram photo of the insane lathe, and that appears to be an MD or MT product. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, 12 position turret with 80 tools. Somebody comment below if you have seen a lathe equally or more insanely tooled out through spindle through the turret? It's always through the turret, um, and then you can do through the tool as well. Yeah, yeah, if, if you want. That, this one isn't just because it has an external line, but you can do that if you want. Um, this is thread milling right now. Oh, really? Okay. Got it. So actually an awesome size machine. That was the drill we were running? Yeah, yeah, so like 23 millimeter drill. Yeah, it's a, it's a good size drill. Uh, and normally these, this style machine comes with a higher torque milling motor, but this is just a standard okay. milling motor, so I couldn't push it too much harder yeah. than it is. One of the things that I really liked about the innovation days was they had their traditional showroom with machine demos running, and they were cutting chips, which is great, but then they had two other things. They had some panels going on with some really educational and informative uh, sessions, and then they had this side room right here where they had four machines set up, two five-axis machines, a mill turn, and a lathe, and they were doing these sort of 20 to minute clinics where you would alternate between the machines and you were able to learn about probing or access work setting or gear hobbing or splines and gave you a chance to talk to an application engineer who these days tend to be much more knowledgeable than the sales guys on the really nitty gritty stuff. So we enjoyed going through that course. So I'm using the C-axis as my driving and my Z-axis and my X-axis are making the tool motion. Look at the size of this, it kind of looks like an oversized fan blade. It's, I believe, a power mill uh, demo that they're running on one of the mill turns. Pretty cool application where they've got not only the tail stock, but also a CNC controlled steady rest. All right, folks, wrapping up, we're back at the NHX Horizontal Series. This is the RPP rotary pallet pool. The more we learn about machine tools, the more I appreciate things like built-in automation as well as the footprint. This holds a huge number of relatively large pallets and a pretty small footprint and gives you the flexibility to really, really run a high volume. We had the chance to meet a actually a fan of the channel at this event who manufactures for the firearms industry who's looking at adding, I believe, yet another one of these. And it matters. When you start filling up space, even if you've got a 20,000 square foot shop, you want huge volumes or the ability to run huge volumes flexible manufacturing, integrated automation, really cool stuff. And there's our camera. And finally, one of the fastest machines that we saw all day, it's a very strange lathe. It's got built-in automation with this parts feeder. It's got twin chucks that face you, and this would be a perfect example of a part if you've got to run insanely high volumes, you care about every fraction of a second. Folks, hope you enjoyed. Card here to the video where we talk about all of the additive and hybrid, the laser tech, the century machines that we saw at this same event. They were worthy of their own video. That technology is just absolutely amazing. But if you're in Chicago next year or you have the chance to attend one of these innovation days or learning days, really recommend you do so. Otherwise, folks, hope you enjoyed. 
Take care. See you soon.